Hey, thanks for checking out the vlog here today. This is Chris Johnson with Fuel Your Mission. Uh, this is vlog number 24. I know I had a little bit of a hiatus there. Um, sorry about that, just really trying to get back on track. So um, you hopefully just watched vlog 23. If not, I'll, I'll link it here on the video. Um, definitely check that out. Talks a little bit about how failure is so essen excuse me, essential and necessary uh, to really build success. Today I'm gonna talk about six ways to stop uh, wasting opportunities. And this is definitely a passion topic for me. Um, obviously, as someone that struggles with procrastination like everybody does, I feel like this is an area of my life that I've really honed and, and um, tightened up on over the years. And it's also something that I'm very passionate about. So one of the things that I've noticed and I'm gonna dive into on this video is how uh, we talk about time management so loosely and in such a vague uh, topic. And one of my pet peeves is when I hear people talk about how busy they are. And um, usually it's after they tell me that they can't maintain a commitment that they had or that they're going to quit on some project or they can't, you know, get together with, uh, do this meeting that they really want to because they're just so busy. I'm not saying at all that that's not a legitimate excuse because I, I do believe that obviously we're, we all have those stages where you can't say no to another opportunity. However, Painting a broad brush, I think in general, time management is something that people really struggle with. And I have too at certain part, parts of my life. What I want to try to do here, though, is connect those uh, opportunities with time management into actual opportunities for growth and development in your career, in your life, with your family, with your finances, whatever. So there's six ways that I'm going to kind of go through this. The first is... Um, Stop wasting time. I think this is such an obvious and it's easy to say. We all need that downtime. We need that time where we are kind of collecting our thoughts, getting refreshed, um, enjoying, you know, a day at the beach with your friends, enjoying um, certainly things that develop and, and encourage a healthy body like exercising, working out, that kind of thing. Certainly not wasting time. What I'm talking about here is mindless and unnecessary activities uh, where it bridges into or spans over into unhealthy amounts of time. So this could be watching TV. Uh, certainly no one's going to dispute that watching an hour of TV at night or whatever you do, um, whether it's video games or looking at things on your phone, there comes a point in time where in your mind you know, man, I really wish I should be doing, I wish I could be doing something else or I wish I had done something else. And if you multiply that out across the year, the amount of time you spend doing those little activities that are senseless, it really adds up. So number one, kind of keep an eye on how, how you spend your time. Um, second technique uh, is from Mel Robbins. So I'll link her here in the video as well. But she, um, I definitely encourage you to check this out if you haven't seen it. I heard this probably within the last six months really changed my uh, worldview when it comes to my work. She, she talks about the five second rule. Um, and the principle of it is any tasks or responsibilities that you have that pop into your head, your brain, the way the psychology of your brain works is that you really have five seconds after that comes into your mind to decide if you're going to do it. So a perfect example would be, um, you know, you get up in the morning and you, and you're going to make your bed. You've really got those five seconds to decide, am I going to do it now? Or am I going to, you know, put it off and, and come back to it later? And there's, there's a lot of data that backs up the fact that those little split second decisions where you can quickly make a choice and then move on, uh, really set the tone for your whole day. Obviously you see where I'm going with this. The ripple effect would then be your week, your month, the year, um, little decisions that we sacrifice on where we just cannot seem to connect the dots between a thought and wanting to do something and then actually physically going and doing it. So apply the five second will be step number two. Step three is be confident and put more value on your time. This is something that um, I struggled with tremendously in my career, especially being a young professional. Uh, I would attend every meeting. I would never give any excuse that I couldn't go. Even if I was buried in work, I would just show up. Um, Obviously, you college students, you know, you've got responsibilities where you do need to show up and attend class. I'm not advocating that you cut class, but um, that's that's your decision. But I think as you start to become a young professional, guard your time. Um, don't let yourself get pushed around just because you're young or you're learning or you're new in the organization. Use discretion. Obviously, there's a lot of meetings that and, and activities that you're not going to want to turn down. 
Um, but you know, as you start to build your career and start to develop, you, you will learn what you can say no to and what you should say no to and double down on the things that you want to be involved in and that you should be involved in. So, uh, put more value on your time. The, the fourth step, and I'll try to speed up here is to get a routine and stick with it. This is extremely, um, extremely, uh, intuitive kind of cut and dry. Uh, what I mean by that is is get into a groove. Get set your morning routine. What are you going to do before you leave for work, or if you work from home before you kind of log in for the day? What are you going to do before you go to class? After you go to class, get into a routine. Spontaneity is great, um, but use that for your hobbies and your enjoyment. But when it comes to actual work and doing the things that you want to do, spontaneity isn't good. You need to get a routine, be successful at it, and move on. Um, number five is act responsible. This is this is so obvious. Um, just spend your time wisely. This kind of maps back up to some of the earlier points, I guess. But be responsible. Act like an adult. Um, you know, flittering away hours playing Halo or whatever the latest game is um, uh, that that you may be into. Um, that's not a good use of your time. Uh, so act responsible, act like the person you want to become. Uh, and then the last step, number six, is treat more things like investments. And this is really a game changer. That's why I wanted to end on this. You know, if you think about something that's valuable that you're invested in, um, obviously that term could certainly apply to finances and your retirement and all that stuff. But I'm not talking about your financial investments. I mean, an investment is something that you pour your time into. It could be pouring your time into. It could be pouring your money into. It could be both. What I think happens too often is we don't, as human beings, we don't treat things like an, like investments. We don't treat people like inv investments, whether that's friends, family, significant other, whatever. We don't treat our stuff like an investment. Um, and I was raised to do that, so that comes easy to me. But I can also understand how it's hard for some people. Um, and we, most importantly, we don't treat our time as an investment. And that really needs to be, you really need to rewire that in your brain. Um, because if you view everything as like, if you envisioned yourself making a hundred dollar deposit to go and spend 30 minutes with your friend over coffee or an associate or whatever, you would really think harder about whether that's a good use of your time and, and whether that's developing and building your life. Um, and this could be another topic altogether when we talk about creating value for others. However, if, if you just start changing that mindset of viewing things as, as an investment of yourself into whatever it is that you're going to do, what will happen is you'll start to cut out those things that aren't, aren't, um, that aren't valuable, that aren't creating value for you or others. And that could, again, tie back up into some of those other things about wasting your time, but um, I'll leave you with that. So um, the takeaway, I know I had six steps here. The takeaway is really audit uh, how you're spending your time and the value you put on your time. And, and that will help you tremendously um, in terms of not wasting opportunities in the future. Have a great day. Thanks for checking it out. And I'll talk to you later.